Coming up on Digital Music Trends episode 189 on the 25th of June 2014, the UK singles chart finally welcomes the streaming data, T-Mobile unveils its music freedom initiative, the contract YouTube proposed to the indies leaks, the BBC's new music strategy, Patreon closes a significant round of funding and much more. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends, I'm Andrea Leonelli and this is the weekly show where we talk about and try to make sense of the latest news in the digital music industry and DMT is available as an audio and a video show on a variety of channels, you can find it on uh, iTunes, of course, most podcatchers, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, Mixcloud, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio and uh, a lot more platforms, so uh, definitely go and find it and subscribe on whichever platform you prefer to use and you can tweet us on at Music Trends if you want to leave any feedback or subscribe to the mailing list on bit slash DMT list if you'd like to receive weekly mail outs on what's going on and the latest shows and uh, today it's a real pleasure to welcome back to great guests so uh, first of all Jules Parker from Polaroid Management so hi Jules and thanks for joining me once again how's it going? Hi there yeah very nice nice and sunny it's it, good yeah it's a lovely day it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm roasting in this room it's a uh, it's got like a corner glass wall and it's uh, like a uh, like a uh, a greenhouse essentially uh, so yeah that's good so uh, and house <laughs> apartment views across london oh yeah absolutely, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> and uh, and it's also a real pleasure to have darren hemmings back on the show a founder of a digital agency motive unknown on motiveunknown.com so hi darren thanks for joining me how's it going hello good to be back i'm very hot as well yes just a, a quick temperature check <laughs> There you go, just nice. 27 degrees. I think we've had this before last year, Andrea. We got yes. to 32, and yeah. I was kind of visibly dying on the camera. But yeah. uh, anyway, it could, lovely to be could, back. It could only be worse if you were recording this on the top of one of the new route masters that they've deployed in London, or where they're heating uh, by the air conditioning breaks uh, every other day. And so you can board the bus, and it can be like literally 45 degrees, because uh, there's no opening windows or anything. It's all sealed. It's like being in a fishbowl, essentially. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like the central line. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say, it just sounds like the average daily commute. They've just made it it's like that's in total parity with the London Underground. Yeah, but so. the, the Underground's got those tiny vents in the London Underground that create some air <laughs> circulation. Or you can open the windows. In those buses, it's literally like you're sealed. There's nothing, nothing in. I find it helps on the tube yeah. if you can find a, like a small child to flap or something yes. like that. Just <laughs> anything to keep you going. <laughs> I, th- I think it's a health policy. You need it? to have yeah, a small child everyone... first. Like, <laughs> I think you're in an advantage there, Darren. <laughs> You keep everyone at the temperature of a sauna, you know, it's going to be good for you. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, getting, we're getting out of the illness. Come on, people. <laughs> All right. So uh, this week, I, I was so sick of uh, opening up with YouTube. And so I decided not to open with YouTube. Uh, we're opening <laughs> with a different story. And so uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the UK's streaming charts, uh, uh, sorry, UK charts overhaul uh, from this week. So uh, this is something that uh, I know US friends uh, hang in there because this affects uh, how your artists also chart in the UK in a singles chart and what happened is that the official charts company finally unveiled uh, uh, their uh, reform of the chart uh, after much deliberation I know that this has been ongoing for a long long time and essentially they will incorporate streaming data as part of the UK singles chart uh, counting a hundred streams uh, as one download uh, in terms of uh, weight weighing and uh, including uh, the data from companies like Spotify, Deezer, Napster, Xbox Music, uh, Music Unlimited and Rara as part of this uh, process. So, uh, you know, this is a move that was wildly expected, uh, but it it might actually upset the chart quite a bit uh, because the number is that there's more than 200 million uh, streams a week now in the UK. Uh, This kind of equates to 200,000 new uh, downloads, essentially, uh, if we look at the formula that they're using here, uh, that are entering uh, or being counted into the charts. So, uh, interestingly... uh, the UK chart won't count YouTube plays. Uh, this is different from what Billboard decided in the States, uh, where they, they are counting YouTube plays. And uh, and essentially, I wanted to start by asking you know your thoughts on the on the changes, uh, your thoughts on YouTube ex- uh, YouTube's exclusion as well, and uh, uh, how do you think this might may affect the chart uh, going forward? Uh, Darren, what are your thoughts? Um, I think it's been interesting. I mean, it's you know I think it's safe to say it's probably overdue. Um, yeah. In the sense that the, you know, with, with, with the sales of you know downloads declining and and just sales of everything declining really on the music front where a, a product is concerned, um, it's uh, it certainly will be more reflective to include streams. But yeah, it does open up sort of awkward questions around the exclusion of YouTube and SoundCloud. And you know, I, I think, I mean, I, I, 
I, I don't know, you know, I think it's very easy to start making wild claims that this will sort of swing the chart in favour of an older audience or some kind of nonsense like that. Right. With the <laughs> argument being that, you know, the kids, capital T, capital K, uh, kind of watch YouTube and, and that's their main consumption point and things like that. But, um, you know, it's a start, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> like everything, they've got yeah. to begin somewhere. Uh, I mean, I think the exclusion at YouTube, at the risk of dragging this back to a certain debate at the moment, is... Is, is probably not a bad thing. Um, it's interesting to see Martin Talbot's kind of comments, Martin from the OCC, the, yeah. uh, the charts company, if you're not in the UK, um, y you know, where I think he sort of indicated that they view uh, YouTube very much as like a video promotion platform, yeah. which is interesting because I think if you talk to a lot of other people, they'll kind of tell you that YouTube is a consumption platform and it is where music gets listened to and the sort of ins and outs of whether it's a, a video promo, if it's sort of the, you know, the online MTV or whether it really is just another streaming service is sort of very much up for debate. But, yeah, you yeah. know, on the whole, let's, let's not, you know, beat them over the head with it too much. It's a start. I think it'd be very interesting to see how it affects the chart, uh, you know, but, um, and it, you know, it's something we've seen before, wasn't it, where, wasn't it when... Um, per track sales i think on itunes got kind of included toward uh chart levels and, and as such you saw a lot of kind of weird back catalog stuff suddenly yeah. popping up in the chart off the back of a big moment on a tv sync and stuff like that um you know but that's all good i think you know all of this is good and it may be uh, slightly more reflective of the general you know patterns of consumption if you like out yeah. and about rather than just being the sale yeah sure J jules what are your thoughts yeah, I, th I mean, I think it's, it's overdue. It's very, very welcome that it's happening now. Um, I actually went along to the MMF had a, a thing they did with the OCC, which was the official charts company. They had a, a, a preview of the, the streaming, you know, uh, announcement happening. So, that, and they had some interesting data up there as as to how it might affect that week's chart. Right. And and the answer was pretty much not very much at all. <laughs> there, there was a couple of a couple of things that they'd that might have gone up one place or down another place, but there wasn't some wholesale changes that were that were happening really. Um, I think that uh, uh, one of the things they, they kind of uh, talked about was if, uh, and, and this happened in Sweden, I think when it when it first came in, was that some um, songs hung around for yeah. longer. Yeah. So it it wasn't as easy to break new acts, and I think they recognise that, and I think they're going to. They're working with it as a as an ongoing project to see how they can make sure that you know it doesn't exclude all new music. Yeah. Um, for a start, and um, they also announced as well as the the main chart, they had uh, a breakers chart as well, which was I, I can't remember exactly their their title for it, but it but it looked an interesting one. It, it, I don't know whether we're going to go the way of, of Billboard and have like you know fifty charts in the in the back. Uh, yeah. The fact they cover all different genres, <laughs> all different kind of. Um, formulas but but it i think they had a yeah a good approach to it it seemed to be an ongoing approach because obviously they're going to have to address youtube at some point yeah um i think they're working out how they do that and and, uh, and it yeah sorry, go on, go sorry. no and and also there, there are a couple of caveats uh, uh, like uh, i think the the cap has to be you know uh, the listeners have to uh, play 30 seconds or longer of a track in order for that to qualify and also there is a cap of 10 listens uh, per individual user user because uh, uh, you can quite easily get into the territory of uh, oh i forgot the name of the band but the band that did that um Oh, uh, the Sleepify. Uh, yes, that's right. The Sleepify, yeah. uh, where you know you'd encourage your fan base to just play the track continuously, and that would probably skew uh, the chart a certain way. So that can't be done because there's a ten uh, listen cap per individual user uh, per day, I think. Uh, and uh, f like asking from your perspective, as people that deal with the, with you know bands all the time and sort of working on the promotion of, of the music, and uh, how how relevant is the? Uh, we had this discussion before on the show a few months ago. How relevant is the singles chart in the UK? And uh, actually, I was picking up on something that Will Page uh, talked about yesterday at the uh, Music Publishers Association's annual general meeting. He was talking about the fact that there's all these different charts now that are sort of siluses and are, uh, that are important in themselves, like the iTunes chart, the Spotify chart, and how those influence things. And uh, do, do you think that uh, sort of they compete with uh, uh, the official ch singles charts uh, in the mindset of, of uh, consumers? And how so? Anybody want I to think the, the official charts, I mean, they, they had to become more relevant because, right. you know, basing it on sales alone is, doesn't match at all the consumption that, that people have these days anyway. So they need to change, and they need to change further 
to make it uh, like a one-stop shop, to make it something that the people see as relevant and uh, as worthwhile to say, look, we're, we're number whatever it is yeah. in, in the chart. I think people always use the other charts as, um, as promotional material. The iTunes charts, obviously important um, here. It, it's less important in other countries. Um, I mean, I've got an artist who, who works a lot in Sweden and iTunes is com- pretty much irrelevant there. You yeah. know? So, so they only go on, on, on streaming charts and they only go on streaming numbers. And um, I, I don't know whether that's a, that's a taste of the future, whether that's, that's what's going to happen here. But um, I, I think they're important. They're, they're great to say that we, you know, that, that an act has, has, has achieved something in a certain area. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of, it's interesting. Uh, Darren, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, I remember when uh, Universal went all like on, on, on air on sale and all the tracks were being <laughs> released at the same time as, as uh, they were going on radio. And uh, uh, that didn't seem to have a fantastic effect on, on, on the results. And so uh, we're still seeing quite a few artists that are gearing up towards a release and trying to make sure that they get the biggest bang possible from uh, you know, the first week or that they manage to at least uh, gain a position in the chart to get more visibility. So is that something that you know, artists that you work with as well, as well are looking to do in terms of you know, we want to chart uh, you know, in the top 20 so that we get more visibility? Is that a factor or does it not compute anymore? Um, I mean, I think all, all notable charts are valuable. Um, within the promotional side. I mean, as Jules said, you know, if you're in Sweden and you're sort of saying, well, we're top 10 on iTunes, nobody will really care because in the grand scheme, iTunes isn't really a big player over there. So it's it's not particularly meaningful to, to quote that kind of thing, you know. Um, whereas, you know, to say that you're doing well on the Spotify chart, for example, you know, would, would have more meaning maybe in Sweden than here even. Right. So I think, you know, each of those charts are good and, and, you know, labels will always use them as just an indicator that stuff's going well, which is entirely fair enough. I mean, I think you could probably argue that in the UK, the official chart is still the, the you know, the one in the sense that that's, you know, with certain bands that's obviously connected to Radio One. Yeah. And, you know, those sorts of that, that you know symbiotic relationship to some extent is is uh you know just ensures that if you're doing well on the chart you're going to do well on radio one airplay to, yeah. to an extent as long as the song fits and things like that so that you know i think the official chart is still the one that people would keep the eye on for a true uh, true insight on what's going on um but the others all still have value provided they're you know in some way meaningful um yeah. so there's that and then in terms of the 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 strategies around it I think it really varies, you know, I mean, um, with the, you know, obviously work with Old J, they've just put out their first single from the new album. Well, I'm not sure you can call it a single, really. I mean, it's a track from the record that they've made available. Uh, But there was very much of a policy to, to, you know, make that available to everyone at the same time. But, you know, it just seemed a sensible move because the demand would be there for it. So to not do that just felt like you were holding something back, whereas... You know, when you're working with a new band and there's much more of a reason to build to an impact point to get a bigger kind of, you know, net effect, then I think the the opposite applies where there's probably a good argument for, you know, having your play at radio, maybe your hottest track with Zane Lowe or whatever, you know, and those sorts of things that just allow to, to get word spreading and momentum building so that when you do make it available, you've kind of front loaded it to get maximum impact. Um so I think it, it really varies depending on what the artists maybe have to prove. You yeah. know, when you're a bigger yeah, yeah. artist, you've got less to prove. You know, you're, there's no question that when Coldplay puts something new out, it's going to sell a shitload of copies or <laughs> get played a lot or whatever. You know, the response currently will be massive. So yeah. there's there's not really a great deal of, of sense in sort of holding stuff back so much. Yeah. But, it, you know, right. it, it totally varies per campaign. And, you know, there's a degree of confidence. You could still be a big band with a kind of, you know, difficult second album moment or, yeah. you know, here's our kind of sting record of bloody loot covers or whatever, you know, at which point you might want to think slightly differently about your strategy. I don't know, you know, it's, uh, but the, all, all I know in music is, is there's never a boilerplate. There's never a template. That yeah, you can yeah, just sure. Go, bang yeah. repeat you know and it, it no, there was there was an interesting idea of, of well, almost the reverse of um you know keeping your, your songs back from spotify um <clears> with <throat> the changes and actually having that available having the songs available on spotify before the official release date so you can just get a massive amount of streams on spotify yeah. so when you start you already have a decent position in the chart 
right? No, that, I mean, well, that's the thing, and I think that we're we're going to have to be careful of that. I mean, uh, I think actually something we've not touched upon is the degree to which this may inform strategies. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to yeah, go release. That. You know, it, like, would you <clears> put the record on SoundCloud and you know, and potentially, arguably, lose plays to SoundCloud? That's actually a damaging, a damaging development for them in a sense because of this. I think it sends Could quite be, a clear yeah. message that the fact that they're, I guess, you know, it's, it sounds a little harsh, but not necessarily legitimate players in the game, I suppose, is, is it, you know, I th I'm, I'm sure somewhere, someone at SoundCloud is spitting their tea out right now, <laughs> having heard me say that, but, you know, they, they don't pay, they're not, they're not settling the rights holders, so getting a million streams on SoundCloud when it's earned you kind of nothing i mean there's always an ancillary uplift in yeah. you know sales plays whatever revenue elsewhere um but yes as a direct platform it's it's not contributing and uh so i think it's sort of right that they're they're left out for now um and it may be a you know an impetus for them to to fix that and i'm sure they're still working on oh, this yeah, so it yeah. seems to be accepted wisdom that they're going to sort that out at some point um so, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one, but I, I am curious, you know, I'm sort of sitting and waiting relative to my <laughs> own clients to see if someone's going to do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, for what it's worth historically, when I've experimented with sort of leaving things off SoundCloud, what we learned quite rapidly was that you're just not on SoundCloud. Yeah. It, it doesn't, you, you know, people don't sort of go, oh, it's not on SoundCloud. We'll go somewhere Never else. Never mind, there, I'll yeah. go and listen over here. I mean, there's always, you know, if you were sort of drawing Venn diagrams of all the services, there's there's overlap points in the middle uh, where, you know, someone uses SoundCloud, also uses YouTube, Spotify, whatever. But, yeah, if you're not on them, you, you're missing a whole audience that you could otherwise yeah. uh, really connect with. So where singles are concerned at the moment, um, you know, we're, the clients I work with are not sort of holding singles off of SoundCloud. Yeah. Uh, albums certainly, and some might say rightly they are, but um, singles they're not. But it will be interesting. You know, I'm kind of watching and waiting to see who's going to be the first label to sort of say, can we, can we not go with that at all and try and drive everyone to Spotify yeah. where the plays count. Yeah, exactly. Jules, uh, you were talking about the MMF meeting. Did, did, did anybody mm -hmm. raise that point of changing strategy around? Uh, you know, of course, uh, up till now, uh, to, uh, with the release of a single, uh, labels were pushing for uh, uh, downloads uh, because uh, of the way the charts worked. Uh, but uh, now that they are getting money from streaming and that the ca they count towards uh, the charts, so do you think that's going to be there's going to be a change in, this, in the way they they uh, present? The yeah, I, th I think I think it'll be it'll be. Um It'd be a balance of things because they, I mean, yeah. they're, they're still going to still going to want to have the front loading of, of the sales yeah. uh, numbers in at the start, and they still want they still want that. Um, I, I think it will affect it in some way. I'd, I'd actually be interested to see how it's going to how it's going to change it. Apart from trying to make sure that you know, as we said before, put it on Spotify as a promotional thing almost yeah. before an official release date, as opposed to SoundCloud, and that is that is a, a possible um, thing that could happen. Um, but it, it's still it's still fairly low weighted in terms of 100 streams yeah. for each um, for each download. Uh, I, I mean, I, different countries have different ways of measuring it, so I don't know whether that's a whether that's going to stay at, at that weight or it's going to change. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, monetarily it makes sense. It's what it's an, we're talking about 99p to a pound 29 per uh, download, and we're talking about a, a penny. You know more or less uh, depending on the contract of course uh, per stream and so 100 makes sense from a sort of money perspective uh, but we'll see if, whether that stays there or not uh, and uh, uh, moving on across the pond I want to talk about uh, T-Mobile so uh, again and not quite on the YouTube story yet I'm holding that back I don't want to talk about it <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it uh, I want to talk about T-Mobile because uh, the company announced a really <coughs> interesting new strategy the company CEO uh, John Legere is Legere's I hope I'm pronouncing it okay uh, announced uh, the new uh, music freedom initiative during a lengthy press release uh, uh, last Wednesday at the Paramount Theatre in Seattle so his logic is that instead of partnering with a single uh, music streaming service uh, uh, and uh, that would tie of course uh, T-Mobile's customers to choosing that in order to get whatever particular discount they, they could get, uh, he decided to open up the field to all streaming services essentially uh, by uh, freeing up the, the bandwidth side of things. So essentially if you are a subscriber or if you use a, a streaming service, uh, your data consumption on wireless won't be counted towards your monthly cap. So initially uh, this uh, is going to include Pandora, Raps 
apps of the iHeart Radio, iTunes Radio, Slacker, Spotify, and Samsung Milk as the services included in, in the offer. Uh, but the company plans to allow uh, every legal music service on board uh, in time. It's just a, a, a a technical uh, issue from what I understand so far. Uh, the decision has raised eyebrows though from a net neutrality perspective. Of course, uh, wireless uh, is not constrained by the same net neutrality uh, regulations as uh, uh, wired connections in the, in the US uh, and there's actually a whole Federal Communications Commission debate going on right now uh, uh, t- talking about whether they should extend the net neutrality provisions to uh, wireless uh, carriers, uh, but uh, uh, you know, the, the move is, uh, and I'm wondering, you know, I read a lot of articles from leading publications around the fact that this is a bad thing for net neutrality. But looking at what they're doing and the fact that they are planning to not exclude any legal streaming service in, in, the, in the long run, I'm just wondering whether that is actually a problem or not. It, I mean, from my perspective, I, I'm the first person to jump at net neutrality issues. For example, when Deutsche Telekom in Germany uh, partnered with Spotify and only users that use Spotify could get free bandwidth as part of that as part of the deal. But in this case, it just doesn't seem to be a problem. But maybe I'm wrong. What, what, what do you guys think? I mean, I think for, for me, it feels like it's, I mean, I, I take your point, but at the risk of sounding a bit reactionary, um, it does still feel like you're potentially at a sort of thin end of a very dodgy wedge with this kind of approach. Because it's, you know, it certainly opens up a, 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 a you know a sore topic, I think, on the, the the way in which music is used as a sort of sweetener p- to potentially introduce these uh, concepts around you know a, a breach in net neutrality and things like that. Because it's it's easy for for you know your view is you know as you said it's kind of uh, it's only mu- you know any music service can get on this. But uh, while that's true, you know not everyone wants the music service, and if the music services are getting a preference over other services like video ones or whatever, then it's it's just opening quite a sort of ropey uh, precedent there. And I don't like the yeah. way in which music is being used as the sort of sugary sweet to, to remove the bitterness of, of what they're doing. You know, it's, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think it's interesting in the, the last few weeks of activity relative to, you know, YouTube and Indies, Amazon and Hachette and all these kinds of things, you know, are starting to sort of shed a light on quite a quite a negative sort of side to, to, to things at the moment uh, relative to big players throwing their weight around. And I feel very much like this is uh, potentially going down a similar path and maybe one of these things where right now everyone would be like, ah, it's free music or you know music over outside of your data cap it's all good you know what's not to like about that but with a really nasty sense that in five to ten years this could royally bite you on the ass you know and it comes full circle and suddenly you're being held to ransom just to be able to have an open flow of music and stuff like that yeah i mean the quote that i thought nailed it was was mike masnick's on on tech dirt when he he said that uh you know, if you if you rescue a baby from a burning house, you're a hero. But if you set fire to the house first before rescuing it, not so much. And that's kind of, I think, a a good analogy for what we're seeing here. So it yeah. it's uh, like everyone. I think my initial reaction was kind of like, "Way great!" You know, you can stream music everywhere. Although God knows in the UK, like, good luck with that unless you want a really shitty stream quality. But <laughs> quibble aside, you know, having that, your initial response is, "Wow, that's amazing!" Yeah, um, yeah. But it sets a very strange and dangerous precedent. Jules, are you a, yeah. uh, an optimist uh, like I am in this case, or are you with Darren on it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of fifty fifty because right. I, I mean I, I'm I'm not sure they're in their planning. They kind of thought about that that at all. I don't think they th- thought about kind of images of uh, you know of net neutrality or any any other issues that that might have come around it. I think I think that that I'm I'm in one sense yeah I I don't like free music being like that 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 sweetener as as Darren had it you know for drawing people in without thinking about whether whether that's actually going to give any value to a creative community but you know whatever no one really is thinking about that anyway but um i, I think that uh, in some ways having it having it there and having it available that's really good you know yeah. that's if 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 it encourages more streaming especially in america if it encourages more people to use streaming services that's probably a good thing whether they're using a, you know, if if this, they're not bundling a premium package, are they? No. With no, with just, this, so free, so yeah. they could very easily just be um, doing you know free streaming 
free streaming services, what Spotify or Beats, whatever. So um, you kind of wonder how much worth that is to to uh, a, a band or an artist themselves. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I it, it does make me. It does kind of make me think. Yeah, there is there is a slight nasty taste in the mouth about yeah. it. I mean, for but, me, like um, I don't know. For me, like the fact is that I I'm completely against the idea of money changing hands. So I, I would never want you know to see uh, Beats or whoever paying T-Mobile to provide users with free bandwidth or facilitate the speed or whatever the access to their service. Uh, but because no man is changing hands and it's just a business decision decision on T-Mobile's front to draw more customers in, that's what, where I am sort of like thinking that in this particular case, I don't see the downside in it. But, you know, uh, Darren, you're completely right that this could all be the byproduct of a very convoluted thought process on their part. Uh, <laughs> where, We're going to take over the world. Where, you know, this is the beginning of something... Uh, very different than what this looks yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, it, so. it goes back to what I was saying about Twitter when, they, you know, they opened up a kind of free-for-all on third-party apps and then when it didn't suit them to have that anymore, they simply turned it off. Yeah. And it's very possible that, I mean, you know, like I said, I really hate talking in a manner that could be perceived as a sort of tinfoil hat-wearing, you know, conspiracy theorist. Um, and uh, But as I said, I think, sadly, things that have happened recently kind of tend to swing more into that sort of yeah. end of the view of, of what's going on here uh yeah i just you know it's like everything people sort of say it's it's free and we won't charge and it's kind of like well you won't until you do and at some point they can simply go meh we're gonna start you know you're doing really well out of this now spotify so uh this is putting a huge load on our servers blah 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 Give us a block. you need to pay yeah um yeah that's all so and and just uh, you know as i said i think sadly if we look around at what's gone on um, <laughs> over the last certainly couple of months but you know one may argue over a longer time period you know the the, the sort of signs suggest that you know the model is to 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 develop you know positions of dominance and and you know uh, a, a reliance from other services upon your conduit through to the consumer uh yeah. before you then start turning the screws so um it does leave me a little uneasy yeah but we'll keep an eye on the fcc uh, decision as well i think that's due to come in the next few weeks around uh, how to regulate net neutrality for wireless carriers i think that's a really important point because everything is moving to wireless and so uh, it doesn't make any sense to have regulations around wired connections and not to have them around wireless ones so uh, mm. hopefully something will come into place uh, around that and uh, finally we're getting to youtube yay so uh, a key development in the <laughs> battle between uh, the video streaming giant and the indies so youtube tried to push uh, on the independence uh, uh, a contract that they didn't like and uh, uh, inevitably uh, the contract was leaked uh, because there's a lot of independent labels and i don't think there's much of a way for you for youtube to pin it down to a uh, one particular partner even though I'm sure they were uh, shrouded in a bunch of NDAs uh, uh, in regards to the negotiations uh, and uh, it was uh, first analyzed by Billboard and then published in full by Digital Music News and surprisingly actually it hasn't been taken down I thought they would have had uh, some sort of uh, takedown notice uh, pretty quickly but uh, um, it's still there so I guess uh, YouTube is okay with it uh, so I, I am no lawyers and none of us uh, uh, is so uh, um, I apologize in advance if uh, I misrepresent some of the issues but uh, there are a few key points that are I'd like to run through quickly and then we can look at the sort of wider impact uh, uh, of uh, of this on the independent sector for you guys and the represent uh, how YouTube is perceived uh, so uh, number one YouTube is offering a lower payment for the audio only service than the likes of uh, Spotify so that's 65.5% of the services revenues with 55.5 uh, uh, going to the label and 10% going to the publishers uh, um, and this in addition uh, for the video rates this is even lower so it's 55% 45 to the labels and 10% to the publishers and uh, as for the minimum subscriber rate, YouTube is providing an alternative revenue bucket of $5.50 per subscriber per month to labels and $0.50 cents to $0.80 cents per subscriber per month, depending on the product for the publishers. Uh, uh, point number three, the contract includes a 
very uh, ill looked at uh, most favored nation clause that stipulates that if any major label publisher agrees to uh, lower rates uh, than you know to lower rates and those stipulated in the contracts already uh, then everybody's rates are going to be lowered uh, which is uh, uh, not something that the independents are looking upon kindly at the moment uh, and uh, in the ad supported uh, component youtube currently does not place advertising on every single music video due to inventory and also due uh, to uh, you know uh, user retention worries and at the moment uh, on the ad supported part if you do get a video that is not uh, monetized it's just not monetized you don't get paid for it and so uh, the indies would like to see that change so that every video that is played on youtube gets some sort of minimum uh, guarantee <coughs> and uh, finally there are some concerns around the uh, requirements of, for labels to provide their material from day one of release aside from res reasonable exclusives and there's also concerns around whether it's going to be ever possible for labels to take material down if they want to at some point uh, of course i don't want to debate the nitty-gritty points of this because it's, it's too technical uh, unless you, there is one particular point that you want to talk about but uh, sort of uh, g more generally around how this is affecting uh, the indie's perception of youtube and how do you think this is going to progress uh, you know uh, jules what are your thoughts uh, as as a, as a artist manager uh, and how are your artists uh, perceiving this change and, and this debate that's going on yeah well um to be honest the artists artists probably don't know about it <laughs> actually right because it's not it's not making the headlines as much as the youtube uh, the spotify debates no did. no exactly exactly that i mean i i have i have um artists and writers who you know who have have a kind of whinge about spotify um sometimes generally ill-informed but then um uh, yeah, YouTube, they kind of don't even think about, which is right. weird because it has such power. It wields such power. Um, mm. I think that, um, as Darren said on his uh, Daily Digest actually yesterday, it'll be interesting to see what a lawyer says. Yeah. Because, because that's, that's, you know, the devil is in the detail always. Um, I, I think the main point is, is that it's non negotiable or that it's been touted as being non negotiable. Sure. Because, I mean, the, the first draft of any contract that you get from anyone is always full of shit basically you know and, and then and they're trying to put, put put stuff past you all the time but it, it's it's the, it's whether there is you know any negotiation within that that's yeah. the that's that's the problem and i think there's this you know the percentages are obviously they're not they're not particularly favorable then the the lack of windowing the inability to actually take things down and also i think that there was a, a clause in there or that there was a reported clause that they really wanted um everyone to what was it that you had to put your entire catalog on, on yeah, yeah, all the right. time? Mm. That's right. Yeah, and, so. and that you know that's like you know you signing your entire life away all the time. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It, it just it, it's it's not. It doesn't seem like a nice um, approach that they're having. And also, you, you're pretty sure that Sony Music won't have signed the same deal because they wouldn't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, and and they're I think they're probably taking a calculated risk. They're saying, okay, this is uh, ten percent of the of the, the youtube market so hey we don't really care yeah yeah you know darren uh, uh, which is not nice yeah no absolutely uh, darren uh, have you heard any rumblings uh, i'm sure you have from from uh, the people you work with on this and and what do you think may be the uh, result of this uh, of this ordeal is it just going to be a big uh, uh, you know um, shouting match for nothing is there anything that the labels can do to uh, really force their point um I, well, I, I think the labels are doing everything they can to force their point. I mean, little birdie tells me that is, there's, you know, these, this YouTube contract was being sort of mailed out to many press points from a Hushmail account and therefore was totally untrackable. Right. Um, so I think there's a very calculated effort to spread the contract to as many people as possible with yeah. a view to blowing the whistle on it. Um, which, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I had an interesting chat with someone about this the other day and they kind of remarked that the way in which this is all being done is starting to feel a little overly public and a little overly kind of uh, like, you know, this is very much being run via the press. Yeah, confrontational and I, and I, as well. Yeah, I, I, and I, I understand it. I totally understand it. Um, but... I just think the perils of doing things in the public eye are that if you if you make a mistake or if you make a claim that can't be wholly substantiated, you will get absolutely crucified for yeah. it. And the Indies are playing a very dangerous kind of game on that front. Um, you know, even now, I think the, the number one problem I've had with a lot of what's gone on is 
there's a lot of sort of I wouldn't say misinformation, but there's certainly some uh, questionable conclusions being drawn. I think is probably the you know I mean the it, so peeling back you know a couple of weeks whether you know the suggestion was that YouTube would pull videos i mean it's not actually been substantiated whether yeah. that means you know all content comes off youtube or or what you know i mean or not that i've seen i don't know jules maybe you've seen different um i i don't know just something that struck me is that it's been very quiet from the youtube end yeah i mean it, it, I it kind of heard feels, anything it kind of feels also like that somebody there were several mistakes made on youtube's end as well of course you know we can't forget that youtube and google are companies made out of people and uh, I read a couple of comments also on the Digital Music News, uh, anonymous comments, so it you know, can be substantiated uh, on the Digital Music News thread on the contract that uh, stating that uh, heads were rolling at uh, uh, Google about this and how and the way it was handled. So uh, I'm not entirely sure that you know, Google is happy about the way this has been portrayed and there may have been some mistakes made, especially you know, some of the statements that were released uh, last week when we were talking about the fact that uh, a YouTube representative said that they're going to start blocking videos or taking videos down just mm. probably was a misrepresentation on his part of what they were going to do but uh, um, so yeah well, I mean it would be a logical solution to kind of fire the big wig yeah. and, uh, and, and roll over on this one um, which would be nice to see I suppose in the sense that that would suggest a degree of contrition on YouTube's part but I think the it's still like again i don't want to be too tim for hat but you know it's like are you, are you would you be are you are you barracking people on this because of the way they because of what they said or are you kind of barracking them because they got caught yeah you know, and also it's, it's, I, that's the I thing think it's a, it's it's also a kind of general perception of of the power of of google and youtube i think in the public's um you know uh, imagination that and this kind of plays into everyone's beliefs about them and it it does and whether it's true or, whether it's true or not I, I i don't know i think it's um you know they're using that i mean the indians are using that obviously um but but it, it I, I don't know it, it's difficult to see what the actual truth is now it seems to be i don't know well, the, the, this kind of goes back to my point about the you know playing this out in the public eye it was very interesting to see that if you you know if you read around i mean you know there were threads about this on places like hacker news and reddit and yeah sites mm -hmm. like that and it was frankly a bit depressing to see the degree to which people were really not siding with the indies on this at all um <laughs> you know that I mean, if, I have to be honest. I get the distinct feeling that that Reddit, for one, might be might be uh, sporting more than a few sock puppets that are going to be uh, singing the Google company line. Um, but there was definitely a you know you would expect to go somewhere like that and see a lot of people saying this is this is outrageous and and all these kinds of things, and yeah. it really wasn't. And this goes you know this 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 was kind of the the reason for my saying that if you play these things out in such a public manner. Uh, you are really running a high risk. If you make one yeah. mistake, then this could really fall down on the Indies yeah. hard. And they need to be very, very careful. And and equally, mm. you know, I've, I have seen a few people comment that it it just feels a bit, un, uh, you know, it's a bit unseemly, <laughs> a, bit, a little bit, I wouldn't say unprofessional, but the, the, the way in which this is being done in public is, uh, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think you'd see the majors doing that, yeah. and, I, and I'm, I don't mean that as a criticism. I, you know, I, I wholeheartedly support the Indies on the basis that if what is being alleged is true, then they are absolutely right to be outraged as all hell. Um, mm. I just think, as I've kind of commented on the digest, you know, I think unfortunately in the world of the internet, you know, truth can be the first kind of casualty in these in these debates and it's yeah. very easy for these things to sort of descend into a, a bunch of myths and bullshit yeah. that you know and and we can all sit here and be outraged that the truth isn't being represented but if you're losing that fight and you start to have things working against you it can really uh damage your reputation on a on a on a wider Definitely. scale so they need well, to be extremely careful yeah and i think as well i mean given the the you know the, the public's general misunderstanding of how the music industry works, anyway, and you know doing it in the public eye, as, as you said, is very dangerous because there's no guarantee that the public will will support you anyway. Yeah. A because mm. they don't understand it, and B because it just doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't seem to matter to them. 
Yeah, and of course, you know, I just read, you know, five points. There were still, you know, generalizations around the contract. They were not really the contract. And I think anybody that doesn't work in the music industry will probably fall asleep in those two and a half minutes <laughs> while I was reading them. So, you know, mm. it's, it's hard to actually get across the reason why uh, uh, independents are upset in a, in a way that doesn't actually misrepresent what, what the contract says. I mean, on the other side, we also can't forget that YouTube is, uh, sorry, Google is uh, uh, subject to the same regulatory approvals as uh, any other company, uh, I even if they are the uh, behemoth of, of the internet age. Uh, and so they are, they have to be mindful of the EU regulations and also uh, 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 FCC regulations in the US. And, and uh, uh, I know that complaints have been filed on both fronts. And so uh, that could also be a reason if YouTube backtrack on this, uh, why they do so, because they are worried about wider implications for Google as a company in uh, uh, antitrust or monopoly in inquiries and where this could be hailed as an example of, uh, of them leveraging their uh, influence in a way that is not uh, really uh, uh, positive for the ecosystem. So we'll see what happens yeah. there. We'll see what happens. And uh, uh, I, well, I was going to talk about, uh, I was talking about the BBC. The BBC, uh, uh, because it's a UK panel this week, so it makes a lot of sense. And uh, the BBC, uh, you know, is really pushing on its music initiatives. Uh, of course, this weekend, we're going to see, uh, you know, starting tomorrow, actually, the uh, t today, tomorrow, today, uh, the, <laughs> the coverage of uh, uh, Glastonbury uh, uh, 2014, uh, which is going to have a, you know, BBC has a massive present, uh, presence and coverage as Glastonbury and they can, they can actually break bands by co covering a, a specific concert rather than another one uh, and like it happened for Tom O'Dell uh, last year for example and uh, they unveiled uh, its new music uh, initiative uh, at the BBC which involves three core areas of activity the emerging talent digital and landmark programming so uh, talking about uh, of course uh, uh, emerging talent uh, uh, the BBC introducing program which allows acts to get discovered by uh, local uh, uh, regional parts of the BBC uh, has been very successful uh, and it announced uh, two new partnerships with uh, academies, uh, uh, one with the National Skills Academy, which is aimed at developing technical and production skills for music uh, for the future, and the second with the PRS for Music Foundation, uh, which is another important uh, way of uh, helping the independent music industry and the, and the uh, burgeoning music industry in the UK. Uh, also, uh, the BBC will look at broadening the appeal of classical music uh, at primary school, and uh, uh, you can look up the BBC's website for more details on that. And on the digital front, which is the one that really interests us, the initiative are focused around the BBC Playlister and the BBC iPlayer. So uh, the Playlister uh, will be improved. Uh, it was launched last year and it will be improved by incorporating more personal playlists uh, uh, from BBC personalities and uh, DJs. Uh, we're going to see more of them and more integrations across the board. And uh, in addition, Sorry, in addition, BBC One Radio, uh, BBC Radio One will be launching a branded space uh, within the BBC iPlayer, which will enable millions of people to enjoy the station's visual output, uh, including the live lounge performances and guest interviews uh, on uh, the video on demand uh, platform of the BBC here in the UK. So uh, a lot of stuff happening here, and they also have a lot of uh, new uh, programming uh, coming up, uh, uh, which I want to delve into. But uh, uh, it seems like overall a positive move uh, for the music uh, space uh, as part of the uh, a core part of the BBC programming. Uh, Jules, so what, what do you make of this and uh, what do you think is the most exciting part of this entire program? I mean, any, any support for the, um, I mean, just speaking from my, my level, I mean, there's lots of things that are happening, you know, um, a, a kind of very kind of schools level, which is great, you know, just, yeah. just generally helping skills and helping access to music and understanding of, of, of the industry. I mean, that, that's, that's brilliant. From my point of view, the, I mean, anything that helps uh, or, or bolsters the introducing program is good. I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great initiative and it works, it works well. It'd be nice if, there's, if there were more um, uh, ways in at the top level, I guess, yeah. in terms of um, Radio 1 or, or wherever, because it's still very, there's still very narrow channels. You know, once, once you get past, say, a local introducing um, show or local local support, um, and um, you know, and anything that supports that is brilliant. The playlist, uh, I think, is is good. To be honest, I haven't actually. I think the concept's great. I've never actually investigated how that actually works. I know yeah. that they push it a lot on, um, on on the radio, and it would be great if if that works and it encourages more people to, you know, find uh, different kinds of music or or, or increase the use of. Uh, streaming services generally brilliant that's great yeah the, if, if they're committing to export shows that's brilliant um, I, they they already do stuff at South by Southwest if they're doing stuff in LA and New York I think is, is where they mentioned it 
that's good because then there's always going to be broadcast support around it. It depends yeah. who they choose and how they choose, um, you know, the the the, the uh, acts on those kind of things. It would be better if that export strategy would be tied into a more general export of UK music strategy. I right. think there's, there's lots of different strands and lots of different people doing different things as the, you know, the BPI export music growth fund, export growth fund, and other bits and pieces that, that it'd be nice if that kind of thing, if they worked more closely with other um, companies and other places that are helping yeah. you know, UK music overseas that perhaps wouldn't have another chance to go overseas. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Darren, uh, on your front, what, what are the parts that are most exciting you and uh, uh, what are your thoughts about the digital initiatives especially? Um, I mean, uh, you know, I think the the you know the augmentation around introducing as as Jules said is is great um i've got mixed feelings about some other aspects of it if i'm honest i mean what you know so d d um playlister i think is i, I mean I, i struggle with playlister and i i um had to review it for the bbc um to to sort of appraise um so i've i've spent quite a lot of time looking at playlister but I kind of feel like really with Playlister it's sort of currently occupying a space where really Shazam just sort of knocks it out on on almost every level because yeah. conceptually Playlister is sort of I like this song that Zane Lowe played ergo I will kind of add it to a central playlist on the BBC site and then I can export said playlist to any number of platforms and I, uh, you know, I I spent a lot of time trying to get um, like my dad and you know and my girlfriend and various people to use it because you know <laughs> it's a you know but well Playlister is a service aimed at the at, at the at, at Joe public you know so yeah. as easy as it is for someone like me to sort of sit here and and yay or nay the the, the service as a, as a whole I'm certainly not the you know representative of the broader audience so I you know I sought out a bunch of people to trial it who I thought would be. Um, across different age groups and stuff like that and yeah. all of them just sort of didn't really see the point um you know it just felt a bit too convoluted there were too many sort of hoops to jump through and and uh, you know you know even my dad who's my dad's pretty tech savvy and my dad just kind of looked at him and was like yeah i've got shazam for this i don't you know and, and if you, you know if you shazam a, a, a song you know then it, it, it gives you a fairly high number of sort of launch points from there, whether it's iTunes, YouTube, you know, Spotify, Deezer, whatever, you know, there's a lot of ways in which you can discover yeah. the music. And so in the face of that, it just, it feels a little bit like they're trying to kind of be in a space that it's just not really necessary for them to be in. An editorial can come around this in different ways. And I think that dovetails a little with what Jules was saying, where, there are other initiatives going on all all over the place to support new music and things like that. And I just really hope that the BBC works to support those people and not, not actually cut into the areas and the spaces that these organisations occupy. Right. And I mean, a great example of, you know, the, I mean, the one I found truly baffling uh, was, was the, the sort of announcement of an award show, which I just I just don't really understand, you know. And they're kind of saying, well, it will be like the Brits. Well, Jesus Christ, do we need another Brits Awards? It's like, that's, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like the Brit Awards as it is because I just feel like it's just one big pop loving that seems to be increasingly sort of US-led in order to, to draw eyeballs and things. But it is what it is. It's for a pop audience. And certainly I work more predominantly across indies. So I guess I'm not the guy that's going to come out and scream how much he loves it. But... By the same token, I just don't really know what the BBC can do there. If they're doing their own Brit Awards, why? If there's a Brit Awards already doing a perfectly good job of being the Brit Awards, and if they're trying to be something other than the Brit Awards, it's kind of like, would anyone care enough to want to tune in? But either way, I have to say, of, of all of the things that were announced, that one I just found thoroughly perplexing. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, didn't, it, I didn't understand that at all. I, I, I still don't. I need to read it again. <laughs> I read no, it and I still didn't understand it. I thought, what? Every okay. time more info, you know, every time I get more info on it, it just seems even less of a good proposition, you know, because there is a mm. lot of mention of it being like the BBC's equivalent of the Brit Awards. And I'm just thinking, you know, I, I think the Brit Awards are, are in a dreadful space at the moment where it's just mm. a really sort of 
vapid pop thing and it's entirely sort of major label and it's just that it does you know, it horrible. does seem slightly like a you know in a, in a big corporate organization that people sit, sitting around saying what we need is a an award show yeah it just I mean, seems like a big a big event that people yeah. can be at you think it would make more sense for for them to partner with aim to support the independent music awards or something like that well it would but the aim awards is is sort of inherently you know, reasonably niche. I don't think it'd be yeah. insulting to say that it's reasonably niche. I mean, I think, yes, for every Adele or Prodigy or, or you know, Arctic Monkeys, you know, the, 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 the AIM Awards are by nature there to, to represent across the whole spectrum, which is why you also get labels like Alco Pop, you know, winning best uh, small label or, you know, whatever the specific award was. So it just it, i don't think it would be kind of mass appeal by definition and, and that's not a slight on the awards i mean it'd be amazing if that stuff was televised on the bbc don't get me wrong that'd be incredible and not just because i work with the aim awards um <laughs> doing their marketing <laughs> but uh you know it would be lovely to see but i i just think you know maybe it's not it's not the fit but yeah i mean uh, you know it, it's I, I think the the other thing that bothered me was just that i think um there are certainly people out there who are always looking to give the BBC uh, a thorough kicking for wasting licenses, yeah. as money and, and all this kind of thing. And, you know, I love the BBC and would support it. You know, I think like the NHS, it's sort of one of these things that we, we as British people should be incredibly proud of. Um, but the award show in particular, I just felt was handing a stick to detractors to, to beat them with, um, <laughs> yeah. which I, I, I just I find it very odd. I mean, who knows? They may yet surprise me, but when I think the presenters were sort of like Chris Evans and things like that, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I need to, I guess we need to uh, start drawing the show to a close. And so uh, just a, a couple of quick news that I want to talk about uh, uh, briefly. So first of all, Patreon, uh, the uh, new crowdfunding platform uh, which allows uh, uh, fans uh, to uh, give, uh, uh, to promise, uh, pledge uh, X amount of uh, uh, money uh, per uh, work created uh, or on a monthly basis, on a rolling basis. Uh, has uh, closed a 15 million dollar round uh, of funding led by Index Ventures uh, uh, to expand the service. So Patreon allows, uh, uh, you know, uh, it has a lot of successful campaigns on at the moment. You know, there's a uh, podcasters uh, that uh, you know uh, Tom Merritt, for example, from the Daily Tech News show uh, uh, has got like over 10 thousand uh, dollars coming in every month uh, from uh, over 9,000 uh, or 10,000 um, uh, patrons uh, who are pledging uh, some uh, amount of money uh, every month to make the show happen and uh, uh, this is also seems uh, to be quite successful for musicians because uh, people can pledge X amount for uh, every track or every music video that the uh, musician releases so uh, uh, just uh, briefly what do you guys make of it uh, do you think that this could be an interesting uh, uh, platform for musicians do you think that your artist uh, could be interested in, in engaging their fan base in this particular manner as opposed to the traditional ways of, of releasing music. Uh, Jules? Um, I thought there was a slight irony. I thought they should have used the Patreon uh, platform to raise their own money. That would have been good. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There, there's still, investment still needs to come from somewhere, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure. And, and I, will it come from there? I don't know. I mean, if it's, if it's a decent system that, that encourages people to to support stuff then that's that's always a good thing um i think musicians still feel a bit weird about basically holding a cap out and saying hey can you support my support my work um rather than just uh, almost having it transactionally yeah. you know based rather than okay like listen just listen to my song or or support me so i, I don't know how 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 uh, sustainable it is for um for a long-term support of a, a career maybe yeah. for a specific project you could you could launch it like that in a I guess in a pledge kind of way, but um, I don't know. Really, I'd, yeah, I'd have feels, to see it, it more in work. Uh, I've seen a lot of of coverage around this from mu the music point of view, but if, if to me it feels like it works better for uh, real, really long term, ongoing projects like a news website or. Uh, a column or a podcast or something. Podcast that... about sort of music and technology. Yeah, absolutely. Right yeah. Right <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, rather than music, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in that, uh, Darren. Uh, no, I was going to make exactly the same point. I mean, you know, I think Jules, Jules nailed it. But he said that artists just feel a bit dirty about sort of this route. I mean, I'm sure, you know, Benji at Pledge and people like that will, 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 will absolutely beg to differ. Uh, but to me, um, every time some, something along these lines has come up, 
uh, it, it, yeah, it just it sort of has an acrid whiff of sort of begging and you know holding a cap out uh, that the artists fundamentally don't like. That said, I think there are so many other areas of uh, you know of the sort of music ecosystem that this could be of real use to. Yeah, um, I mean particularly. You know, I, I talk a lot with um, Sean Adams at Drowned in Sound about the, the 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 ongoing challenges that sites like his and 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 the Quietus and guys like that face. And I, you know, because I keep contending that um, for quality journalism, um, I mean, I you know, I, I love Drowned in Sound, but I have to say I'm particularly a fan of the Quietus just because I'm old and the Quietus is uh, more matched to my demographic i suppose uh in writing about artists that i grew up with and, and stuff like that uh, but they you know their journalism i love and their articles are kind of good and long you know they're not just a shit listicle that you know of the 50 reasons to love the quietus or whatever um and and i really love it but as i keep moaning to to luke at the quietus you know i i don't really enjoy reading on a on a laptop yeah um and it being on a website that by nature of its design has to run ads and you know that's the way it is uh, and has been for, for many years um, and all of that just conspires to distract me from what I'm trying to read and just generally isn't very conducive so yeah. as an example when the quietus put out their anthology as a sort of ebook on on Amazon you know I bought that and you know truly loved kind of reading it and digging through it some amazing pieces in there it was great now if someone like the Quietus were to use Patreon to, to do, uh, you know, that kind of service so that it could underwrite a cost of maybe a monthly uh, kind of ebook installment, I yeah. guess, of their work, or, you know, same for Drowned in Sound, I would, I would absolutely pay the money for that, 100%. And, you know, and it's those things where I think if it's uh, presented in a manner that just seems to make a, a situation work for people, then... I'm 100% for it, you know, and I think it is one of these things where, you know, whether it's digital music trends or, or even the Daily Digest, if you're setting up something where, you know, maybe you're not making it such a, of a sort of paywalled thing, but you're making yeah. it more of a benevolence kind of support thing, um, then I, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't, I have to say, <laughs> I mentioned the Digest, I, I don't feel the need to charge for the Digest because it, uh, it, it drives awareness of motive unknown and therefore is a, is a good sort of you know, driver of business for me. Um, but uh, it wouldn't bother me to, yeah. <laughs> to yeah, ask exactly. people yeah. to, 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 to support it because equally, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that benefit from it and, and, and have never paid anything and it's been going for sort of two years. Exactly. Uh, so, I, I think everybody you know, is, in the same, is in the same boat. Like, you know, like the guys from Down and Sound, you know, I, I don't have the resources, for example, to hire somebody to sell advertising for me. And so mm. I'm kind of stuck in the place where I'm finding it hard to find sponsors because I don't have time to actually, uh, you know, devote more than a few hours a week to, to doing that kind of work, which is uh, very time consuming. And so, uh, and so th this kind of platform for independent producers of content could be quite interesting because it means it might allow you to keep doing what you're doing without having to uh, either shut down or uh, give, you know, 40% of your revenues to somebody that does the sales for you. <laughs> <laughs> on a commission basis uh so no it's it's very interesting and uh, i am i'm toying with the idea but it's uh, it is also you know the crowdfunding is always a bit of a shot in the dark because you don't know what's going to happen once once it goes it goes on and so uh of course you'd you'd hate to start something like that and then see it not work the way mm. that you wanted it or realize that you have put it across in a way that doesn't quite make sense for your audience and so uh, it's still like a very much of a case of researching as much as possible to work out whether uh it is viable and how viable it is and what people want from it and it's it's a, it's a series of questions that i guess everybody that does this kind of project has to ask but uh mm. excited about it I, I love the service and i i do pay for a couple of uh, different uh podcasts that i listen to because uh, i think they deserve it so uh, we'll see what happens with that and uh, i just want to close by saying that seven digital has just uh, closed a, a deal with a uh, rock mobile uh, which is a new uh m uh, uh, VNO, a uh, mo uh, mobile virtual network operator uh, that is going to launch uh, soon in the US on the 4th of July publicly. And uh, uh, they essentially plan on providing uh, their uh, streaming service, music streaming service for free as part of their uh, $49.99 uh, plan, um, which also includes unlimited texts, calls, and uh, uh, internet service. So it's a very interesting offering for the states. And uh, the founder, uh, who is billionaire John Paul de Joria, uh, aims to have at least a million customers on year one. So a big uh, deal for 
for uh, seven digital if this works uh, as advertised uh, and uh, second uh, the company uh, uh, MOOV move move uh, which is uh, Hong Kong's first uh, page digital, digital music service has released a major redesign of its iOS and Android apps uh, it was the first uh, digital music service to sell uh, paid subscriptions essentially uh, from uh, you know uh, outside of China into China uh, through a deal they did uh, uh, with a, a few of, a few of the carriers out there and uh, uh, so we'll see how that p uh, pans out they have a couple of new functions related to lyrics and sharing and images uh, uh, built in and uh, a new curation engine with lots of uh, curated playlists uh, and uh, good luck to them uh, it's an interesting service uh, although I can only uh, see as far as Google Translate allows me to see on their website because it's all in Chinese, of course. And uh, uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, if you have anything you want to plug, uh, Jules, any of your bands that you want to talk about, that you want people to go and check out, or anything else. Oh, I should have prepared for this one. Yes, um, you should have a look <laughs> and subscribe to, uh, to 1987 on Spotify. Great. Um, especially if you like your music uh, in Swedish and, and very melancholic, um, but atmospheric and beautiful. Nice. And also check out a band called Atu, A-T-T-U, and this new single, We Are Ordinary People. There awesome. you go. Perfect. Thank you. And Aaron, anything from, from, from your side? Um, oh, God. Too many, too many to mention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drenge are playing at Glastonbury. That'll be worth Ooh, watching. Nice. I think they're going to be on the BBC. A uh, little band called Alt-J have obviously got a song out. That's oh, worth enough. checking out. Um, <laughs> it's not had much exposure yet, so I'm sure my, my push on uh, here will help the numbers no end. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> You're going to see a spike on your next big sound chart or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah. Just everything. Basically, the, the, the summary report is just... Uh, it, Name anything, and the line went up like really <laughs> steeply. Um, it's like a you know IPO where, where the stock just starts really high. <laughs> yeah, it just it, on the day of release, it's, yeah, it's gone crazy. <laughs> so we've got that uh, band called Woman's Hour that I'm working with, who are on Secretly Canadian. They're fantastic. Uh, album coming in uh, the next fortnight or so. Uh, that's worth checking out. Uh, who else? There's there's a ton of stuff. Uh, obviously, the AIM Awards, where we currently got the best live act vote going on. Uh, so if you haven't voted in that, you should. Um, I, you know, beyond that, God knows. There's like, I'm, I need to keep a list on my phone of who my clients are. I feel like a man with a hundred children who can't remember the name of them all. Uh, there's a ton of stuff. Oh, I'll tell you another one actually on Spotify. Uh, there's a really good playlist from Just Music called the Just Music. Um, uh, Chill Out Cafe, Volume 1. Okay, cool. If you just search for Just Music on Spotify, they've done this amazing playlist. Now, th I mentioned this for two reasons. One, I do some work with Just Music, so clearly there's a bias. <laughs> but that notwithstanding, the playlist on a day like today when the sun's out is amazing. Yeah. It's like proper just, you know, put together, you know, mix up a margarita, go and sit in your backyard, bake yourself senseless in the sun and play their playlist. It's awesome. It's basically like... If you love Cafe Del Mar, you will go mad for this. Nice. So uh, check that out as well. <laughs> have I done enough? Yes, Can absolutely. Can keep going? I How think... long have I got? Oh, no, <laughs> I'm going to get I, some tequila now. I think that's good. Yeah. I think that's good. Uh, and uh, that's it. I think uh, the other thing I would mention is to go and check out the DMT One to One show, uh, which can also comes out on a weekly basis. Uh, this week I have uh, uh, Ben uh, Brannan, uh, the uh, co-founder and president of the company at Venue, uh, who does uh, the, they do very interesting work in the merchandise space. So if you're interested, go and check out digitalmusictrends.com and click through to the links to the One to One show, or look uh, look it up on iTunes or anywhere else that you uh, care to mention it's one uh, hyphen uh, two hyphen one show and uh, that's all for this week uh, thanks uh, so much guys for your time and uh, thanks so much for listening to the show uh, you can find everything on uh, the site also subscribe to the newsletter on bit.ly slash dmt list and uh, follow us on at Music trends or uh, uh, you know of course uh, share the show if you liked it that's always uh, very welcome have a fantastic week and uh, till next time <laughs>